the communists have always operated at two levels right one is the party politics capturing the power through uh, the elections they they took a lot of time to get reconciled to their idea then they found out that they have no other choice uh, and then there was capture of the discourse through the academ- academia as well as media and movies i believe that their influence in the second half is much more pervasive and has been much more long standing and has kind of made the leftist narrative the standard one even today across various spheres in this uh, spheres in this country and a lot of it was to begin with consciously driven by the party itself right it was uh, the cpi more than the cpm is known uh, to openly back intellectual domination of uh, of the discourse of universities and of uh, of the arts and started filling in marxists at various levels in indian academia and the same happened in in various spheres in the in the so called uh, quote and quote development sector in you know activism and so on and so forth to an extent to the extent that a bulk of who of those who call themselves ambedkarite today essentially use marxist frameworks and structures to analyze indian society it's not actually based on what ambedkar came up it's they, they take up his name but what they essentially do is to do a, a marxist analysis using some kind of an ambedkarite filter and they call themselves extremely anti marxist so to that extent to get, to make it more uh, contextual in, in the indian uh, situation the meme that indian society is fatalistic or that for because of that there are certain uh, limitations to how much india can grow the meme that indian society is not just hierarchical but fixed in time with an extremely rigid which has a lot of consequences and this is some this is a this is a rhetoric which many people including many on the hindu themselves have picked is all essentially marxist in its roots essentially leftist in its roots and it 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 because of a reason and it is and does it because i essentially i believe that marxism is a religion in itself and an abrahamic one in that which believes in certain in state an ideal in state where all of its non believers are finished and defeated forever and because of this larger meta framework any other ideology which kind of didn't feel in sync with it was something to be attacked immediately pagan faith especially the hindu systems were seen as the intellectual opposites of what marxism stood for on the other hand islam was seen as the perfect or the closest to marxism in a religious context in a god believing religious context and the implications even today a lot of the discourse around hinduism that a lot of people on the right wing in india in the conservative wing or the hindu paksha call it whatever have the problems that a lot of us have in the discourse has essentially its roots in textbook marxist theoreticians and i think that influence is only going to continue because a lot of it has been mainstream i feel that the the reaction to it has increased over the years especially in the past 6 years and there is uh, you know scope for aggressive pu- uh, push back from the other side but i still believe that uh, though politically they seem to be quite finished their intellectual domination is here to stay because it has been mainstream i think uh, the answer to your question carry uh, as to what will replace the left in india right will depend on who will appeal to the religious needs of the petite bourgeoisie or the lower middle class and the lower middle castes right who form the chunk there is this 30% 40% group in this in india which which consists of you know castes that are individually not much but together they form the largest chunk right they also happen to constitute india's lower middle classes and uh, upper lower classes the answer to your question will depend on how the up phenomenon in delhi gets replicated across the country in the sense that how well an economic left and a fairly social liberal social left entity political entity succeeds by accommodating the religious interests of this petite bourgeois lower obc group which has become decidedly hindu over the years in fact one of the failures of the left in india was their inability to tap into this section it was a section that they ought to have tapped into if they had to succeed in their revolution uh, in capturing power through the barrels of democracy that didn't happen and it again goes back to the ability of any other form of con- concoction of left it, it it depends on their ability to cater to their needs and right now that space is not up for grabs because it is firmly with the bjp in large swathe of of north india apart from up there is one other place 
where i see a risk or a kind of uh, a, you know a, an opportunity for revival of leftist politics while satisfying the religious and the identity needs of the lower caste uh, lower obc hindus and which is in chatisgarh the chief minister mr bagel has kind of come up with a very uh, odd concoction of social liberalism plus uh, appealing to hindu identity if and again chatisgarh is only marginally more important than uh, delhi in terms of both uh, political influence and size but that is again something to watch out for if these two models kind of spread spread across the country we could see a more politically robust left but it would also be a left which is rooted in indian ethos it will not be like the marxist left which is just another abrahamic faith